and Shout of Thought podcast with James Hall. This is the series I'm going to call Working Past It. And it's dedicated to the people that have reached out to me in good faith to try to get through this injury and a host of other injuries in an effort to live a life that is a little bit more rewarding and, a, and is just in a better place. I want to thank the people that have reached out to me and, um, and dedicate this set to them. Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. So this one, I think it was a while ago since I recorded something, but the last one was going to be kind of this epilogue for this series I did on everything that I had learned. So this is, and I've taken some time to think about that, and it turned into even longer time and longer time and longer time, but I've just been busy. But um, I'm going to recap some... This podcast is going to be the culmination, maybe I said this before, of the things I've learned about healing from neurological injury, which now I'm working with some other people that is, is really encouraging, even though it's, it's difficult. Once people have severe neurological injury um, and they really can't even stand um, to exist, things get really, really, really hard, and everyone has a kind of different degree of difficulty they're dealing with, but sometimes some people you work with every single day is like their last and things get really intense and the lessons that you learn are really magnified because when you make a mistake there's a really high cost but when things get better when they have it for years and then you develop a tool that you can reliably reliably use to get better um, it becomes all the more incredible and when you start using tools that put western medicine to shame through the trillions and trillions of dollars they dump into it then i think that's a pretty notable thing and it, it's something to keep track of. So this podcast is its kind of for a friend that I've been talking to for a little bit, trying to help with some questions on fasting, and it's to kind of sum up what I've learned, um, maybe in the, the, the quickest way I can, but what we'll see here. So what have I learned? I've learned that the mechanisms for healing from neurological injury are fasting and... Um, kind of a brain training for lack of a more accurate term but brain training encompasses neuroplastic techniques to, to retrain the way you think because the problem the, the mental problem is that when we experience harm for a long enough time we become traumatized to it and we train our brain to expect the pain and unpleasantness associated with that trauma, which means we'll feel those things even when they're not occurring. And this is a very significant um, idea and fact and and a real situation for people that have neurological injury, right? Um, And then there's the body, which can be healed, which the only way to actually get to the root cause of healing neurological injury is with rest. And one of those big tools for rest is fasting. So between fasting and finding other forms of rest, that's really how you can get there um, the quickest and most efficient way. And the uh, and really the problem and the solution to this stuff is you ask why can't other other modalities heal this and affect neurological injury? And the reason something to really think about is that. Um, the ner- human nervous system is the pinnacle system in the body. It heals all the other systems. It directs the immune system and other functions of the body to heal and rectify the organ- other organs and systems of the body, right? So when we're trying to fix something that is the highest operating system, right? It's like, try- again, trying to fix a plane when it's in flight, right? It's, um, it's, an, it's, a very, it's extremely complicated, difficult, and dangerous process. So that's why it's so important that we understand all these aspects if we're going to get better, right? And, and I'm going to just keep t- talking about till I'm blue in the face because I'm actually seeing myself along with other people now healing and recovering some, from extremely severe nervous system injury with proficiency. So they're actually, they're, they're building skills, they're leveraging those skills, they're having results, and then they're, they're, you know, leveraging those results until they're all better or or they get to where they want to be or they get to a livable state where they're, they don't feel like their life is going to end, right? The definition of eliminating 
kind of disease and an unpleasantness in the human condition. So, so that's that's a summation of everything that we're talking about and what we've learned, right? So when we talk about fasting, there's a lot of misconceptions about fasting and even maybe I've misspoken about fasting and I've developed my understanding since then. So what do I know now? What's the difference between then and now? Now I know that fasting is a skill, a technique, and a knowledge, and an understanding. What does that mean? That means that there's a practice of fasting. If, if you're gonna recover from neurological injury, it appears now that it's gonna be a practice of fasting. It's not gonna be a one-time fix-all, right? If someone has, um, like say, even cancer, or they have, um, which is a downstream, like a, a cancer is, right, it's a tumor that's growing somewhere, it's, it's um, dysfunctional cells that are, that are grouping together. and and over, taking over other cells around it, right? Um, that's an isolated problem that exists outside the body and affects certain systems in the body. Um, like if you have a parasite, right? It's, it's an isolated system outside the body um, that's affecting the body. So those sorts of things, they can be fixed and rectified with a few fasts or maybe a singular long fast. And then once they're done, that's it, right? So you don't have to be a master in fasting or you don't have to understand fasting particularly well or be practiced in fasting for it to work. However, with the nervous system is different. We're not healing the a system of the body that is affected by another system and that's how it gets better, heals, regulates or, or whatever, right? The nervous system has to heal itself. So we're seeing different factors that kind of form up with that, right? So because the nervous system is healing itself, it needs it needs rest, which the fast gives it rest. But when it's resting, what what I'm seeing through myself and other people is that it's kind of resting, it's lowering its baseline, and then when you're refeeding after the fast, like you have a new baseline, it's able to function and rectify itself and, and fix some things, but then you might need another fast, right, to lower your baseline again, rectify some more things, and then continue with this kind of progress. Um, there's two stories I know outside of the people that I know and what I've done. What one person um, is on a website that I saw that healed protracted withdrawal with two fasts. I think it was like a seven day fast and then like a 13 day fast. And the other one I know of a head injury with persistent headache, right? There's two 40 day fasts and that rectified it. But in both these cases where I'm reading about someone else dealing with a neurological injury, it's, it's taken too fast in both instances. I haven't seen any instances yet where a neurological injury was cured with one single fast. So what is this telling us? It's telling us you need some skills fasting, right? So a lot of people come, and what, what's, what evidence supports this, right? So it's one thing is that people don't like fasting. It's very uncomfortable. They think they're gonna die even after a day. They think they're, they're starving and all this stuff's going on, right? Well, if the body hasn't fasted before, and say you're older, or you eat really poorly, or you have these other extenuating circumstances, you know, that makes it difficult for the body to fast or to leverage what it has stored away, because maybe a lot of toxins and, and unpleasant stuff is stored away, you're gonna have to do multiple fasts, just maybe to be able to do a longer fast, right? You're gonna have to, your body's gonna have to get comfortable with fasting. And when you hear that, you may think that oh, you have to get comfortable with fasting, so you get used to it being unpleasant, and then you know you extend the fast and you go, and mentally you get more comfortable. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that when you fast, it may be unpleasant. The next time it'll be less, less unpleasant, and then it'll go from there. Your body, your, your ability to fast is like a muscle, right? So the more you work that muscle, the more your body is fasting, the easier it's getting and the, and the less unpleasantness you're gonna experience on the fast. This is what I've experienced now talking to other people, seeing this is generally how it goes. Another extremely important piece of information that I'm learning now is that as you fast, like kind of in succession, so you have one fast and then you follow it up like as soon as you can with another fast, that you're not starting back over from the beginning. When you, when you execute a fast and you stop and you eat and then you fast again, 
it appears that the fast is picking up where it left off. So even though you've eaten, you're maintaining the progress that you made on that fast and it's just starting over again. An example of this is there's a story from a fasting doctor, right? That he had a patient, he was fasting with cancer and he fasted for a long time and right at the end of that long fast, he had a sensation in his body like the cancer was burning, right? And, and the fast was actually affecting the cancer and it was being reduced, right? Well, then he had to eat again because he ended that fast. But when he resumed a fast shortly after that, because he felt like there was progress, he wanted to continue the progress. Immediately when he began fasting again, like the next week or a week later, or two weeks later, whatever, um, immediately when he, when he started the fast again, he felt the cancer burning, right? And this is an example. It kind of paints a, a mental picture of what's happening, right? So in my fast, I, I fasted for a long time and then I, I ate and I refed for like six months and then I tried to refeed again, but I wasn't taking really great care of myself, right? When I tried to fast again, I only made it three days because it was so unpleasant. And then I waited a while and I did another one. I only made it 11 days, but I wasn't fasting in between and I wasn't eating great in between. So the fasting became very difficult for me, even though I had, I had made it through 20 days previously. Well, since then I've been learning and applying myself every time I fast and I, and I follow that up with another fast, like a week, two weeks later, it's easier to fast and I'm feeling continued improvement from wherever I left off from the last fast. And I'm hearing this echoed across multiple people. So when you're thinking about the, how do you, how do we get better from fasting, right? If you fast and you feel a little bit better, right? It, with your neurological symptoms, let's say, you know, and then you stop and then you pick it up again and you pick it up at again at whatever cadence you can, it appears that you're going to continue to make progress as long as you're taking care of yourself, right? You're not doing anything destructive. So coming back to the overarching theme is that fasting is a progressive skill that you can leverage in your body to, it's not like a, a one time and then I need to fast longer the next time and longer the next time and longer the next time. That isn't necessarily the case and that's not what we're seeing. You can do successive small fasts and you're gonna see continued progress depending on the variables, right? Pretend, depending on how long in between your fasts. Like, are you staying healthy and like having healthy digestion and you're eating healthy foods in between the fasts, right? This can have a play a really, really big role. I've definitely noticed that if I eat a lot, a lot of heavy foods, right? Like say pizza and burgers or whatever as an example, right before I fast, my fast doesn't go very well. Like there's a lot of rubbish in there that my, my stomach's squeezing down on and it, it's just a bad deal, right? But if I'm eating really lean before a fast, I generally feel better on the fast. And then if I do a follow-up fast, I feel even better after that, right? So these are the factors we should be considering during fasting. That takes a part of the physical part. The, rest, the, the other part is rest, right? If our nervous system needs rest, we need to be pacing and looking at a schedule of not overdoing it. And we have symptoms of overdoing it. We got to avoid that behavior. We still have to do healthy things, right? We still have to stay stimulated, right? Um, so do a little bit of exercise, activity, be creative, do things that you enjoy. Keep your life positive. You're trying to dig yourself out of a massive hole of negativity that you've built from being injured for a long time. So that's important, which also leads us that goes hand in hand with neuroplasticity, doing creative things, taking time to stop what you're doing if you're doing anything that's a habit because your habits are now tied to serious trauma and unpleasant experiences. Right, So every time you stick yourself in a routine that you have through your injury, right, you're more likely, your brain is more likely to go back to a default kind of thinking and experience and interpretation of its environment, which is pain, suffering, discomfort, all these things, right? So as you're fasting and you're improving your, the physiology, the physical part of your body, right, you have to move your thinking into a different space because what do we know? We know that even if you fast and you improve your physical body, you're going to have some better sensations. But if your mind is stuck in its neurological patterns of suffering and expecting pain and expecting trauma, maybe you're fasting and you're having new sensations in your body that are scary, right? You're, if you're in your old habits and your old way of thinking, 
you're going to interpret those as negative signs as the, the fast harmed me there's problems now i have additional symptoms right all this stuff when that it may not be the case right but if you don't have the mindset of interpreting these things in in a in an honest way right because you will feel sensations after you fast your body does have go through serious physiological change you're going to feel some pain probably it'll be transient and it'll it's transitioning you into sensations of feeling better right like when i broke my fast and i was refeeding my stomach would hurt sometimes i would have some bloating i'd have uncomfortable stuff which i interpreted as myself dying right was it true no you know what a few weeks later my stomach felt the best that it ever felt and my digestion was flawless like i was when i was a kid right along with a bunch of other great stuff but you have to work through that, right? Your body's transitioning. This isn't a magic bullet, nor should it be, right? You're going to have the mental discipline of accepting, you know, what your body's telling you as a, a sensation that's communicating to you and not a, um, you know, a negative harm that you're interpreting as your own death or, or as pain or something horrible, right? Negative is never going to go away. Those kind of thoughts need to be removed and you need to you at least need to be honest about what you're experiencing, right? So you have to build this new mindset, which is where the neuroplasticity comes in, right? Of creativity, honesty, right? And a different, primarily a different perspective. So I'll go back to what I was just saying, like sticking to your old habits that you've done for the last number of years that are all based around you experiencing pain and discomfort and negative thinking, those gotta go. Like, do they have to go immediately and all at once and create some sort of horrible turmoil in your life? No, they don't, right? But you want to transition away from those and start doing things, right? Like, go sit in an area of your house you never sit in. Sit in a different position. Look around at what's around you. What does it look like? What does it smell like? How do you feel, right? Go do something else different and do it in a different way. Um, do some art. Um, listen to some music right maybe something you haven't listened to right go outside look at the leaves the grass the mountains smell the air S smell is a very powerful neurological connection to things smell things you haven't smelt before right this sounds trivial and insignificant but you have to understand when a baby comes into this world right it starts building everything from scratch so what is it doing it's, it's smelling things. It's feeling textures. Everyone that's been around a baby knows you do flashing lights and give it a crunchy texture. Like it won't let go of it. It keeps messing with it, keeps interpreting it, keeps trying to understand it, right? It's fascinated with it. You're put, you want to put your body and your mind through the same processes. You're reinterpreting and rebuilding everything that you have previously because you're doing so with a new kind of mind and a more plastic mind because through the fast there's big changes that are happening to it okay right and if you think you can just fast and then you're just going to skate and everything's going to be great it's probably not true if you're going to fall right back into those negative thinking patterns and that habits and you're going to interpret your fast as getting worse or something horrible happening to you and once you tell yourself that enough times it's going to become true and then you're, the benefits of your fast will still be there. They're still going to stay, right? But if you're interpreting those benefits as some sort of horrible change, then that's going to be your new reality. And some people might think that's ridiculous or, you know, that's not quite true or whatever, but I've seen it and I've experienced it. How we interpret what's going on has everything to do with our, our feelings, our mindset, and our reality, right? You know it. Like, look at the people around you. Some people have a crappy mindset. Like, their reality sucks. Everything's horrible. Bad things keep happening, right? And they keep interpreting things as bad. You, some people are happy-go-lucky. They're just constantly having fun, and that's all they ever look for, and that's all they ever experience, and that's all they ever know, right? But they're living two of the same lives. Think about it. This stuff with our Western mindset, this stuff seems really insignificant or it's not important and numbers are important and money is important and all this stuff. Guess what? That's a big lie. It's not true. The way you've perceived everything and interpreted everything and the way you've handled your reality and what you believe in has created everything around you. 
And now that interpretation of that is what you're locked into and that's where you're stuck at. So all the problems, all the interpretation of your injury and how you experience your injury, that's all thanks to your mindset and your nervous system and how you've programmed that as you've developed as a human being. So that's what I'm saying. When we're looking at how to get better, how to beat this thing 110%, how to do the impossible, because I know more people than I count look at this thing as impossible because it feels impossible. Every single day is impossible. Just getting to the next day is impossible, right? There's so much going on. When we're looking at beating that, we have to overturn that mindset that believes that. And we have to start interpreting and then programming our reality as something new that's wonderful, that's good. And then along with that, we need to rest our nervous system. We need to reprogram. And then as you're able to, building the practice of fasting is going to speed all that up. Because fasting, in my experience and everyone I've talked to, it increases plasticity. It, inc- it increases rest. And it destroys all the negative stuff that may be going in on your body. Like all, um, you know, any garbage that's built up in your system is flushing it out and it's shifting it and it's reprogramming it. So a fasting is almost like a physiological way, just like breathing is able to, you're able to control your breathing, right? But it's also autonomic. So you can you can physically rest your body and calm it down by breathing. And it's, that's really the only technique to do that, right? Because you can consciously affect your breathing, but it's also autonomic, right? So you can consciously have a calming influence on your autonomic systems through breathing. I'm going to go out on a limb and say fasting is the same way. You can control like what you eat and the amount of rest your body gets and how taxed it is comes through eating, right? So if you control what you eat and you give yourself a rest from eating, you're giving yourself a deep rest far longer than you could through like box breathing or like combat breathing, right? Or four count breathing, right? Fasting is a far more powerful tool than that, but breathing is a powerful tool too, right? So leveraging all those techniques is how you're gonna get better, in my opinion, in my experience, and what I'm learning from people now that are they're doing it with me and we're working through it together because I've managed to find quite a few people now, which is really fantastic. Now the kicker to all this, there's one exception, there's one kicker. This is not an instructional thing. There's a reason I'm not giving you steps to walk through this process. I'm giving you ideas and principles that you have to understand and start applying yourself because each person is different. Each person that I've talked to and helped through fasting or who's, who's gotten my advice on fasting or I discuss things about fasting with, each person has been different. They have different perceptions and feelings. They have a different starting point. They have different like misconceptions that they need to overcome and they have different conceptions that they need to build to look at the fast honestly and look at resting honestly and look at their mindset honestly that they got to work through to get through the other side. There is no one size fits all and there never will be. Each human being that endeavors to do this is completely different. So they're going to have to do a different course of self-exploration and understanding and practice to develop something that works that they can rely on that's going to be dependable when they're not feeling well or they get a certain amount of results but then they're feeling better and then they don't feel so well, right? So then maybe I need to fast again or I overdid it, right? And now I don't feel well so I need to get a better regimen of resting or I need to be more confident in my resting or I need to be more diligent about resting and we all get pulled away from these things and this is not you know again it's not you don't take a pill this is not an overnight thing right everyone's going to be working through the course of their life while they're developing these things and this is the way it's supposed to be this is the way our life was designed right like whatever we're going through we're always life doesn't stop for anything right so us developing the skill and the practice of working through these things as life occurs and having tools to do it that are reliable and actually work that are actually a part of your human existence and body unlike medications and treatments and other stuff right this was a natural you know god-given thing to creation to intelligent design like fasting and your ability to to control your mindset your reality and your physicality 
So using those tools and not relying on anybody else, we can work through this stuff and come to an amazing place where we can recover from you know, virtually any injury out there. And uh, six years ago, I didn't think this was where I would end up, but here I am. So this is for the people that are listening. This is a really small and quick summation of what it is and what it means that you can listen to over and over um, again to try to figure out how does this work for me. So if you listen to this, you understand these concepts. Now you have to break them down individually and try to understand what it means for you, right? What does changing my mindset mean for me and how can I do that? What does fasting mean for me and, and, and how do I do that, right? What does resting mean for me and how do I do that? Because you're going to have to, everyone has unique obstacles that, that are going to get in their way of doing those things. And so each one of you is going to need a unique answer that works for each one of those things. And as you try things and you fail, you're going to learn. And then you're going to have a next step. And then you're going to fail again. And then you're going to have a next step. And it's through that learning process that you're going to find mastery of the practice of these things. There's no other process that you can go to. There's no perfect answer. There's no immediate success for these things. Through that process, you're going to you're going to gain patience, wisdom, and uh, fortitude to, to get through more of this stuff in the future, whatever comes up. Because guess what? Even if you're 100% better, there's going to be something in your life that's going to it's don't even call it a setback it's just going to be something difficult you have to deal with in your life that's going to you're going to have to recover from again like this is the natural course of human ex existence we go through periods of feast and famine there's an ebb and flow to everything right so this is a part of you gaining expertise in that and becoming a more awesome version of yourself so it all has a purpose and as soon as you submit and understand that purpose then you can go forward if you're resistant if you fight it if you go other directions in my experience it's just you're just gonna have more adversity and suffering which is again pointing you in one direction right on you're gonna need to master adversity and suffering if you want to if you want to gain something that has meaning right which is kind of virtue stuff that I've talked about before so I'm gonna end it there um, I hope this made sense I hope it's as clear as it can be even though each person, there's no clear steps to this thing. Each person has to figure it out for themselves, right? But if you understand the principles, it's absolutely doable. It's actually relatively easy. You might have to eliminate some distractions in your life. If it doesn't seem easy, if this seems confusing, then eliminate distractions. Listen again. What can I do for this? What can I do to fast? What can I do to rest? What can I do to change my mindset? Simple questions. If you sit down with no distractions and you ask yourself, how can you do those things? Answers are going to come. Practice is going to come. More answers are going to come. And guess what? You'll be completely free of, you know, the psych injury that no one can help you with and no one can heal or this neurological injury or this head injury, right, that no one can heal. You're going to be, you're going to be in way better shape, right? And that's what's happened to me. That's what happened is happening to the people that I'm talking to. And we're just, it's just a matter of we understand these principles. We're just working through them and reworking them and re reworking them. And every time we rework it, it gets better and better and better. And that's what we're seeing. Initially, I had thought like, hey, you do a big one and then you're good to go, right? And you do another one, maybe you're good to go. Well, it's, it's looking like we keep seeing steady improvements, which is totally different than anything else. I don't have steady improvements with anything else, right? Keep seeing these steady improvements and we keep reworking it and re-understanding it better and better. And things keep getting better and better and people's emotions are coming back um, their life's coming back their dreams are coming back their sleep is coming back all this stuff is it's happening across every single person that I'm talking to and I'm seeing this isn't a oh in 10% of people you know or even in 70% of people this is being consistent in every single person including myself I thought maybe I was an anomaly maybe it wouldn't be the same but that's not what I'm seeing so far so is there still a lot of work and understanding that needs to be done yeah but it's enough for me to be bold enough to say what I'm saying right now. Um, I'm really certain of it. And I think there's a lot of other people that are certain of it and have seen the same things. But people aren't listening to them. Their voices are, are not being echoed and reverberated um, amongst other people because, because it takes work and responsibility. And I, 
almost everybody I know, they don't want to do work and they don't want to do responsibility about it. They want to, they want to be spoon fed an answer. They're a dying person on a bed, right? And they're just waiting for everybody to come around and take care of them and to fix them because that's what we've been taught and indoctrinated into when that's not happening. You're just dying in the bed, right? And no one's going to take responsibility for your situation. No one's going to feel your pain for you. No one's going to learn from your situation. You're just going to be that person um, that's at the mercy of everybody else. And you got to ask yourself if that's where you want to be. Um, and if that's what's meant for you. And if, what's the, if that's what's meant for human beings and humanity. Um, I sincerely disagree at this point, at this juncture. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to pay the price for my decisions and and what happens through this process, but that's where I'm at. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, be well, um, and hang in there.